uh, from USC. Today, I'm going to talk about this paper, Understanding Lifecycle Management Complexity of Data Center Topologies. This paper, uh, the author, first author is Min Yan Zhao, and the professor is Ramaj Govinda. So I'm Tony Liu, I will be the one participant uh, I'll talk about this paper today. So let's get started. Yeah. Okay, so introduction. So uh, when we are building a, a data center network, we want to evaluate how good uh, is our network. So how do you describe how good is your, your data center is? So you can hear people usually focus on performance. For example, you hear people talk about uh, how low is my latency, how high is my throughput, something like that, right? But I know performance uh, has been an important issue for a long time, but is there any other aspect we've ignored? How about complexity? So we certainly want our network to be as complex as possible. And you always hear people talking about uh, some topology that has been less complexity, but can we quantify it? And uh, are there any matches to quantify it? So uh, to address this problem, in this paper, several metrics have been uh, characterized and used to measure the complexity of lifecycle management. And moreover, a new class of topology called uh, Fed Clock has been devised. It, and it, ha it has lower complexity of lifecycle management with the same performance uh, as other well-known topologies. So uh, let's see. Our introduction, we're talking about some metrics to measure uh, the complexity. We also talk about a new uh, device uh, topology. So let's dive in. So uh, let's take a look at the uh, background. So for starter, let's take a look at uh, two uh, popular uh, topology family, close and uh, expander. So this is close, right? So what is close? Close is a kind of uh, multi-layer, you can see multi-layer, multi-layer networks like this. And its hierarchical design enables scalability, which may get a popular choice for a data center network. For example, Google, Google's Jupyter use clause to construct this data center for generations until it's uh, OCS optical circuit switching, something like that, uh, comes into the picture. So before that, uh, clause has been uh, dominated in their uh, data center. And uh, it's pretty much like this. So the point is the hierarchical design will enable the scalability, pretty much like this. And another family is called expander graph. Expander graph is like this. So. Uh, Two famous topologies in this family are Jellyfish and Expander. Uh, with their height age expansion property, they achieve strong connectivity properties and send bandwidth as cross based topologies for fewer switches. It's pretty sweet. So it seems like both topologies can achieve great performance with a reasonable number of switches, yeah, even fewer, right? So, uh, what's the problem here? The problem here is that, that imagine you are building a data center. Yeah, there are a lot of links here, right? With a lot of servers. So say you got a hundred thousand, a hundred of thirty servers. Is, is it easier to do a wiring? Remember you have to wire every link manually. Is that difficult? How many different lands you're going to need? You're going to need it. In addition, if we want to expand the network, imagine that. Uh, is it easy or is it hard? So this is our question here. Uh, how hard it is? I don't know, I have no idea, right? Look at, take a look at this paper. So our problem here is that we want to expand it. Is it is so hard? And uh, what are the factors deciding how hard it is going to be to deploy or expand the given network? So uh, to talk about the complexity, uh, how hard it is, uh, we first take a look at the first kind of a complexity called the deployment complexity. So what is deployment complexity? Uh, it literally means how hard it is to deploy your network. So uh, uh, what are the factors to affect deployment complexity? We have three factors here, packaging, placement, boundary. So what, uh, what is packaging? One example is chassis, chassis in Jupyter. So 
it basically means multiple connecting switches. You can imagine we put a multiple switch together. Instead of stopping hundred of switch into a rack, we can just stop maybe two or maybe few more chassis into a rack. So it really reduces the complexity here. The second factor is co-placement. So uh, uh, this basically means how you're going to place your devices on the data center flow. So if you have more switches, you're going to need higher placement complexity. And it's like uh, you have dozens of solving or trying to stop them into one tiny, tiny living room. So it's a uh, placement. And the, the, the third one is called boundary and uh, patch panel. Okay, let's take a look at this. Uh, it's very crucial to reduce complexity. So imagine you have a network like this on the left hand side, right? And uh, instead of connecting every link individually, uh, which is the pain in the ass, why if we bundle two links together, right? Take a look at this. We bundle it together and then we plug the bundled wire into a panel, this one. Uh, patch in, uh, plug it into a panel and let a panel do the work. Isn't it save a lot of work, right? That is how a patch panel do. Uh, so with this concept, we are ready to see uh, what all the metrics we should have. So three metrics here. So first one is called number of switches. It is intuitive, right? So with more switches, uh, we have higher packaging complexity and higher placement complexity. The second metric is called number of patch panels. So the more the number of patch panels, the shorter the cable length from the switches to the near, nearest uh, patch panel is but the fewer of boundary opportunity is. So that's what is called number of uh, bundle type. A bundle type is represented by the top of uh, one, uh, a capacity of uh, number of fiber in the bundle and second, the length of the bundle. So, 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 so say we have two configuration uh, with same complexity of number of fiber, but different length, right? Different length. So we have to regard them as two different bundle type. And of course, we want a uh, fewer type to gain less com uh, complexity, right? We want a fewer type so we don't have to purchase different configuration, we have to purchase different uh, length, different patch panel, something like that. So, uh, yeah. So, we have our matrix now. So, let's take a look at how a full letter clause and a jellyfish do with list three matrix. Okay, so here is a comparison. Uh, between a foliar clause, medium size with a jellyfish. Okay, we have a uh, certain uh, number of servers here, right? And um, you can see that clause benefit from its uniformity has fewer bundle type compared to jellyfish, which is a random graph uh, structure. So it is less structure uh, uniformity. As for the number of panels, uh, since jellyfish has more interact link so it re requires more patch panel right so with these two facts in mind we can have a quick takeaway now uh, we have three metrics to measure the plus, uh, deployment and started from comparison between clause and jellyfish the takeaway here is that we we want our topology to be more structured or we can see more hierarchical design and we want more intra rack link rather than inter rack link. So this is a two uh, takeaway we have to remember here, uh, just to reduce our com uh, complexity. Okay, so let's take a look at the second uh, concept here: topologic expansion. So uh, problem. So if you are Google, can say uh, your Google's and your Googler, and you would like to. Uh, would you like to deploy a whole network in one shot? No, you don't want that, right? Because what's that? Because you might uh, not need all of that right now, right? So uh, what if you just want to deploy part of it and gradually expand it, right? So for example, you don't want 100% of its uh, performance. Uh, you want to gradually expand it as you gain in more customers. So here's the problem. To expand the network, you need to rewire it manually. Manually. 
So that means you're going to need more manpower, and you're a computer science student or you're an engineer. So you should hate anything involve human more than anybody does, right? So I don't want human power get involved. Okay, let's avoid that. So uh, we hate it. Moreover, when you conduct rewiring. It's gonna be a uh, traffic disruption. Oh, traffic disruption! And if we mess up with the network, customer will mess up with all of us, and we're so screwed, right? So let's the problem here. We hate manual rewiring, and we don't want traffic disruption here. So let's see how we're going to rewire this so we can avoid this problem. Take a look at this picture here. We want to do rewiring here. So the original uh, rewiring is the A to A, B to B, C to C, D to D. You get the idea here. So we want to do rewire like this. What should we do? So the traffic is drained from C to D, right? Disconnected or drained and drain D to D. And then we connect uh, the connection between C, D are rewired with C being connect to E and D being connect to F and so on. Get idea, and then the new link are a drain after it allow the traffic to do the uh, to, to use the new capacity. So basically, this is how we're going to do the rewiring, uh, for this case. So here's the question. Question is, can we rewire a link at the same time? Right. Instead of cutting C, D, can we just cut uh, gen every link at the same time? No, 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 right? Because we will lose all the traffic and our boat is going to rewire our hair, it's going to kill us. So, how many links can we rewire per step? Here's the matrix code expansion SLO. Right. Here is a uh, expansion SLO. So, let's see what that means. So, uh, uh, if we say uh, expansion SLO of 50%, that means that we maintain 50% uh, of capacity by reconducting expansion. And many provider operate are at 75%. That means that at any time, uh, they will lose 25% uh, of capacity uh, top. So, uh, uh, with that in mind, we have two metrics, uh, two metrics for uh, expansion. The first one is called the number of expansion steps. That means uh, each uh, expansion step requires a series of sub steps, uh, which cannot be parallelized. Therefore, the number of uh, steps determine the total time of expansion. So we want it to be right, to be small, because we don't want to take so many step to do the expansion, right? So this is the first uh, matrix here. So uh, average, the second one is called average number of rewired link in a patch panel rack per step. So we can do this uh, uh, parallelize. Uh, the time it take, it is the time taken to rewire a single patch panel rack. Uh, and it will dominate in the time uh, taken for each expansion step, right? So, uh, with these two matrices, what would we know here? So we know that to gain a lower complexity, we ob obviously want low value in both metrics. We want low number of steps. We want low number of rewire link uh, in a patch panel per step, right? So again. Let's bring our claws and jellyfish to do the comparison so we can see how do they do with these two metrics. So this is claws and jellyfish. Uh, so uh, we can see that uh, yeah, before we started, we, can, we have to know that the SLO is set it here to be 90%. That means at any time, we have to guarantee that uh, uh, we lost 10% top okay, at any moment doing the expansion. So uh, so you can see that uh, okay. you can see the uh, design on the left 
uh, before we, we dive into it, we, can, we have to see that uh, the sun on the left is called uh, uh, is called a node to self threshold of one. It's a thin edge, and the distance on the right is called a uh, fat edge, which have the ratio of uh, two to one. So, go back to here. You can see that why jellyfish require fewer step compared to claws, right? The reason that jellyfish require fewer step uh, compared to claws is because it has higher ratio. Why is that? Uh, okay, let's take a look at this picture. Let's go back to this picture and see why is that. So, uh, what happened if we unplug two link on both sides? Okay, on left side, if we unplug two link here, pa pa, we lost fifty percent of capacity. Oh, not this picture. Uh, let's see this picture here. Sorry. So let's take a look at this picture and we will see why is that. So on the left hand side, if we unplug two uh, link here, pa pa, we lost fifty percent of capacity. How about we unplug two link from this? You can see we still have 100% capacity. So now we know why higher north to south ratio, we have more redundant capacity and we can do more in one step. And uh, under condition with this uh, concern of the SEN SLO, uh, we only need fewer steps. Let's explain why. Why jellyfish has a fewer step compared to cloth because it has a more ratio. It has a fat fat edge design here. So, so the takeaway here is that uh, closed topology require uh, requiring uh, needs more uh, needs more uh, expansion step and require many uh, more step because they have lower uh, north to south capacity ratio. So we want. Uh, fed edge in our design. That is the takeaway here. Right. So uh, with that in mind, they proposed a new topology called fed click. So fed click means fed edge mean, uh, plus click. So before we start it, let's do a quick recap here on the deployment complexity and uh, topology expansion. We want our design to be one, more structured and more hierarchical, right? And the two, we want a more intra rec connection, rather interact connection to reduce the deployment complexity. Uh, moreover, we want fat edge in our design. So can we do this? Uh, fat click uh, has a three layer of hierarchical, uh, of a hierarchy. First layer is individual sub block. Uh, second is interconnected into a block, and then which in turn uh, interconnect into a form of fat click, like this, okay, hierarchical. Moreover, it, uh, look, interconnection used at every every level uh, is a click, like this, right? So this really increases the connectivity, so hierarchical check. Each level in hierarchical is designed to have fat edge, like right, fat edge. Uh, so they capture, uh, they capture by constraints specified in their synthesized algorithm. So fat edge check, and the uh, synthesized algorithm I mentioned before, we are also try to maximize the intra rec connection while maintaining a fat, uh, fat edge constraint. So check on the intra intra rec connection. Oh, we got everything here. So let's talk about on the synthesized uh, algorithm here. So, uh, we mentioned the synthesizer algorithm. How does it work? The designer of Google will have, uh, have to specify two input parameters n is the number of server, k is the uh, chip radix. Uh, algorithm takes this input and attempts to uh, an instantiation for the sign variable that uh, determine the fat click instant. Okay, six six some constraint here. For example, what do we have? C one uh, here means that ensure the fake edge at sub block level. And for example, C two, uh, PC plus 
the PB build and else this ensured in the Fed edge at a block level. So basically, the, this free constraint here ensured Fed edge uh, at every level here. So uh, with this design, let's talk about what is the pros and cons about this uh, topology. So uh, what's so, so, so special about it? First, by package click connection to a sub block, explode fewer external ports and ideal code port hiding. Second, by employment uh, hierarchy and regular structure, uh, it permits bundling and require fewer patch panel. Moreover, by ensuring the fat edge at each level of hierarchy, enable fewer re, uh, rewire linkages per patch panel and fewer expansion steps. So uh, this is the upside here. Is there any downside? Uh, of course, it's not always perfect, right? So, uh, well, since Expander and Jellyfish um, do not incorporate a hierarchy, they can be scaled to uh, arbitrary large size. However, uh, since Clause and Fed Click uh, has a hierarchical design, they can only scale to a fixed size of a uh, for a given chip radix, right? So. Uh, this is its downside. However, uh, flat click can easily scale to the same order of magnitude as five layer clock. And the uh, five layer clock and flat click, both of them can scale to 60 times of the bandwidth of, of Jupiter. So 60 times of Jupiter, Google's data center, well, that should be more than enough, right? So this downside is not so bad. So uh, we talk about pros and cons. Uh, let's evaluate uh, uh, life cycle complexity. Uh, so this is uh, deployment complexity and expansion. Let's see how faculty uh, do with these two uh, uh, metrics here. So the first con is the deployment complexity. Uh, here we see the number of panel here. This uh, this figure shows the difference number of panel between different topology at different scale. So, uh, so here, small, medium, large scales support a different number of servers. Now we have that in mind. So, so for, exa for example, scale, uh, small scale supports the same number of servers as a three layer clause does. And medium supports uh, four layer, as much as, uh, as many as four layer clause uh, does and the large to five layer class. You get idea here, right? So, and uh, C, J, X, F uh, represent a class, jellyfish, expander, and fat click uh, res respectively. And the Y axis uh, is the number of patch panel, right? So you get idea here. So let's see how, uh, how do we do here? So from this figure, we can see that at a small and uh, medium scale, uh, close real relies on patch panel mainly for connections between aggregation and spine block. Close use fewer uh, fewest number of patch panel. In fact, click used about eleven percent more patch panel. Jellyfish and expander use almost forty four to fifty percent more. Right. So uh, now this two, we can see that um, fat, fat click is not the best. But when it comes to large scale. Uh, fact, click need the fewest patch panel compared to the other topology at the last uh, at the large large scale. Uh, clause need the patch panel to connect between top of rack and aggregation blocks. And but here, uh, fact, click carefully pack engine strategy become more evident. So with uh, pack engine strategy, uh, fact, click needs fewest uh, uh narrowing like. Uh, 25% figure patch panel compared to clause. The majority of the patch panel used in fact click uh, at, at all scale comes from interblock link, okay, which increase with skills. All right, so let's take a look at the expansion complexity here. So this figure shows the number of steps, which is the y axis, uh, required to uh, expand the uh, topology to twice their existing or presenting size. So expansion, you know, expansion ratio is two here. Uh, so, and uh, you can see uh, the x axis is the different SLO. 
So uh, now we get ideas. So let's see at uh, seventy five percent SLO, all topologies require the same number of uh, expansion steps. But you can see that uh, the SLO increase uh, uh, step required to expand clause steadily increase clause increase crazily right here. So this is because the number of link that can be wired per aggregation block and clause per step is limited by the SLO. And that is why you don't you don't uh you don't want to ignore fake edge or you want a fake edge in your design. That is the reason here. On the other hand, fake click and expander jellyfish require fewer and comparable number of uh, expansion steps due to their effect edge property allows many more link to be rewired rewire per, uh, per block per step. So you can see that with fat edge, well, fat click, expander, jellyfish, uh, they're pretty low, remember the low as the SL increase thanks to fat edge here, right? So uh, here's the summary on the evaluating uh, life cycle complexity. What have we learned here? So we, what we learned is that Beckley is, a, is the best at most skill uh, by all our complexity metrics. You can see that it used 50% fewer switches, 33% fewer patch panel compared to um, claws at large scale. And it has 23% lower uh, Capital cost. You also permit fast expansion while degrading network capacity by small amount. So shout out to Fed Edge again. So uh, what's the conclusion and future work? So this paper characterizes the complexity of lifecycle management of uh, data center topology. It also devises that uh, and cap capture the ca capacity of each. And it designed a family of topological effect click, and the effect click has a low com complexity by uh, all of our metrics at large scale. As the management complexity uh, increased, the importance of design for uh, manageability will increase in the coming year. So you can see as the data center grows, we want our data, our network to be manageable, and we want the uh, complexity to be able to be quantified. So in this paper, we have only considered topology with the over subscription ratio of one, of, uh, one to one. Uh, Google permits over subscription ratio at age uh, in their network, uh, but uh, we heard that other provider also um, uh, allows the over subscription at higher level in cost topology. That is something uh, this paper is uh, future work mentioned. And we might need to design over subscription, uh, over subscription technique in FACLIC so that comparison can be based on the same footing. Well, moreover, in the future, uh, we might want to consider other network management problems like um, fault isolation or control plan complexity. You can see there are all different aspects in complexity. So it is really mentioned in the paper uh, in a future work. This is a great, great paper. I just uh, some serious problem in the futures. Uh, I'm honored to um, present in this paper to you guys. Thank you so much. I'm Tony. Nice to meet you. Have a great day.